Science by Farouk Alemi at George Mason University. In hiring, promoting, and managing clinicians, managers often need to understand the efficiency and effectiveness of clinical practices. Clinicians can be compared based on a single statistic, usually risk-adjusted expected cost. This lecture describes how to organize benchmarking efforts. Many managers are hesitant to benchmark providers, fearing that benchmarking intervenes in physicians and patient relationships. But this is not true, as practice profiles are constructed after the fact when the patient is gone. Practice profiles do not tell us how an individual patient should be managed. They identify patterns across visit. No one tells the clinician to prescribe certain drugs or to avoid sur some surgeries for a specific patient. Practice profiles document the net impact of physicians on groups of patients. As such, these profiles provide information about clinicians' performance over. One of the problems with benchmarking is that measurement distorts goals. So if you measure length of stay, clinicians might improve length of stay but have more frequent admissions. So it's very important to focus on goals that are broad and that are not leading to other distortions in practice patterns. Second, measurement often leads to defensive behavior if the data is not presented properly. It's very important to make sure that we don't spend hours and hours talking about whether the measurement was accurate, but we focus on how to improve even if the measurement was not that accurate. Sometimes the problem is that there is no adequate measure of severity available. In these circumstances, we need to use tools that will allow us to compare apples to apples. Finally, too much time might be spent on measurement and too little on improvement. Any measurement effort, any benchmarking effort, should keep in perspective what's the purpose. There are at least four different distinct methods of conducting benchmarking of providers. The first method is to compare clinicians to the average of their peer. The second method is to compare clinicians to the average of peer care of the same kinds of patients, so controlling for the types of patients. The third method is to compare clinicians to expectations on admission. Uh, these expectations are usually derived from the severity of the patient's illness. And the last method we would like to discuss is to compare clinicians and peers on patients matched on certain features. Let's start with comparing clinicians to the average of the peer. This is the most common. You calculate the peer providers and the clinician's average and the standard deviation. You compare these data using test of hypothesis with unequal means. The key problem is that maybe that this kind of analysis is misleading as providers see different kinds of patients and the clinicians with more severely ill patients will naturally have worse outcomes. Here is an example. 123 internal medicine residents at New York Presbyterian Hospital were uh, uh, examined. The outcomes examined included f patient satisfactions, disease management profiles of average of 7 diabetes and 11 hypertensive patients. This included patients' conditions and frequency of use of various medications. And in addition, faculty evaluations on seven dimensions. Here is an example of a sample report showing the average, overall average in the dark line and the dashed line showing one resident's uh, data. You can see, for example, this resident on various dimensions is doing less than uh, the average, in whether they are perceived to be truthful, warm in greeting, not condescending, listens carefully, shows interest. And so the second method tries to overcome the problem of lack of severity adjustment. In this approach, uh, patients are classified by their severity in low, medium, and high severity, and the expected outcomes are calculated across these severity categories. 
these expected outcomes are calculated first for the clinician and then for the peer providers using the same probabilities as the clinician's patients. Here is some data that can show you how to do, we do this. In this uh, example, we see 20 patients for clinician A, 30 patients, and 70 patients in low, medium, and high severity. In the peer providers, we have 40, 40, and 50 patients in these categories. The, the point of analysis is that we ignore the 40, 40, 50 as the distribution we use in calculating expected outcomes for both the clinician and the peer providers is the number of patients in the clinician group so that we can extrapolate the outcomes that the peer providers have had on the patients of the clinician A. Here we see the, the result. Uh, the clinician has 4.4 days on average, the expected outcome is 4.4 days, and the peer provider's expected outcome on the same patients is 4.1 days. Therefore, the clinician is less efficient than the peer providers. Another way of doing severity adjustment is to assess the patient's severity, predict the prognosis of the patient on admission, and calculate pairwise student T comparisons of observed and expected values to see if the patient's outcome fit our expectations. Here's an example. We see here data on length of stay as expected based on severity and as observed. We calculate the difference and use pairwise T distribution to compare and see if these differences were statistically significant. When severity indices are not available, the analysis is modified so that we calculate the expected outcomes for the clinician and the peer providers using feature by feature matching of the patients. This is done by replacing the probabilities by the probability of finding a particular combination of features in the clinician's patients. Note that the same probabilities are used to calculate the expected outcome for the clinician as well as for the prior providers. In this fashion, we calculate the expectations for the types of patients that are showing up in the clinician's Let's look at some data. We are matching the patients here based on whether the patient has had a previous myocardial infarction and whether the patient has had a congestive heart failure. The clinician has seen a set of patients and the peer provider has seen a set of patients. From this data, we calculate two things. One, the frequency of various features for each clinician. And second, the average outcome for each clinician. The figure on the left shows the event tree for the clinician's patients and their outcomes calculated from the data supplied earlier. The expected length of stay is 5.4 days. Now we have to calculate the expected length of stay of the peer providers on the same patients as the clinician. To do so, we move the event tree of the clinician to the peer provider side. Now the expected length of stay on the same patients of the clinician can be calculated for peer providers and it so happens it's exactly the same, 5.4 days. Therefore the peer providers and the clinicians have similar outcomes on the same types of patients. Of course the situation might arise where the clinicians and peer provider trees do not match. In these circumstances, we replace the missing components in the clinician's event tree with the expected value of peer provider's event tree. If this cannot be done, we use alternative approaches that weight cases by similarity and do not require feature by feature matching. After the benchmarking data have been prepared, we need to provide this data to the clinicians. In order to do so, we need to follow certain steps. 
Before the meeting, schedule a feedback time and date as soon as possible. Check your data to make sure that there are no errors. Add text, charts, or graphics, and supplement numerical data with anecdotal information in the voice of the customer. For example, you might include a short audio from a patient. And distribute handouts ahead of the meeting to, to each one of the clinicians. At the meeting, make it clear that the evaluation is confidential. Make a brief introduction of the purpose of the session. Acknowledge the limitation of the practice profiling method. Present the data and under no circumstances make any conclusions. So repeat just exactly what the data says and do not infer that one clinician is worse or better than another. Explicitly ask the clinician's evaluation of the data after each section of the report is presented. Do not defend the practice profiling method, the benchmarking effort, or any aspect of your work. If there is criticism of your work, acknowledge it and say that you will continue working on it. Thank the clinicians for their time and describe the next step. After the meeting, summarize the components and append it to the report. Describe resources available for clinicians who want to improve their efforts. Send a written report to each clinician and ask the clinicians to comment on what worked well and what needed improvement about the feedback session and whether they do plan to change their practice and in what way. Set the time of the next benchmarking effort at the end of this report. The take-home lesson is quite simple, that expected outcomes can be benchmarked using severity of patient's illness, and these efforts are essential in effective management of clinicians.